Hey YouTube, so this is going to be my first retouching video. A lot of people have been asking on my Instagram account how I retouch photos and people ask what software I use and kind of the process that I go through to make my images. So I figured I'd throw together a quick walkthrough of um, one of my photos. So this is the photo that we're going to be retouching today. Um, it's a automotive rig shot that I took last week. Um, so you can see the boom pole and things like that that we're going to need to clone out. Also go through and show you how I change the contrast and color of the car and do some of the things that I do to almost every photo. So um, this is what the final product will look like. As you can see, um, the base image is still pretty close. It's just the contrast in the car, the highlights, the shadows, everything's just kind of accentuated to bring out the body lines of the car and to really accentuate the lines and the look. So pretty good transformation, but not super hard to do. Uh, the first thing you need to do though, um, I use a plugin quite often on all of my, all of my photos. So if you head over to um, nick.com, it's a Google product. They actually just made this free, so it's a super steal for everyone now. Uh, very powerful software. But go download that, install it into Photoshop. They have instructions on how to do that, so I'm not going to go through that here. But download it, install it, and then pick up with the video. So we're going to start with this image here. Um, I already did some, some basic adjustments in Lightroom just to kind of flatten the image out problem with my car is because it's silver with black wheels and then you have the super bright skyline in the back it's really hard to get kind of an even shot um, either the body's blown out or the sky's blown out or the wheels are completely dark so that's something that I have to deal with quite often and frankly I usually use HDR method where I expose for the wheels and I expose for the body then I expose for the sky and then kind of merge those all together with the rig shot I don't really have that um, opportunity and with the timing that I took this and the amount of time that I had to take this I, I couldn't go through and do that so what I did is I kind of got a heavy medium between the three so got some details in the wheels the body and the and the sky there was some blown out stuff in, in the sky so I pulled that back with the highlight slider and then also brought up the the shadow slider the the cameras these days are so good that they can they can pick up that dynamic range and even if you don't see it as long as you shoot raw um, as opposed to JPEG you can usually recover a lot of that detail in in Lightroom or Photoshop so that's what I did I just basically made the the file a little bit flatter so I have that detail in the shadows and the highlights for what we're getting getting ready to do so the first step I do is duplicate the background just so you have a new layer to work on so that's just Command-J or whatever it is on PC. I'm working on a Mac, so all my commands are going to be Mac. So just figure, figure out what that is for you. So after you duplicate your background, we're going to go to that plugin. So Nick, and we're going to look for Color Effects Pro. So once Color Effects Pro opens, the first thing that I'm going to do for this image is go down to White Neutralizer. And what this is going to do is you'll see once I click on the car, it's going to change the the white balance of the image. As you can see, the car is silver, but it looks really blue because it's reflecting everything from the sky. So I don't really want it that blue. Then the second thing I'm going to do is go down to tonal contrast. I usually leave it at the default, but one thing that I do do is pull back the saturation. Again, we just got rid of that color cast and I don't really want to introduce it back. So what this is going to do, this is going to add some of the contrast back to the car. But one thing we're going to do, as you can see, is the tonal contrast adds um, kind of a funny effect to the background and the clouds. And we don't really want that at this point. So what we're going to do is we're going to layer mask that layer. So we're going to put, we're going to change the layer mask to black. And then we're going to take the brush tool and we're going to paint white on that mask to reveal what we did in Nick. So you're just going to brush over the car. 
get a small brush. You don't have to be super detailed on this. Um, you obviously want to spend more time than I'm spending here. This is just for the purposes of this video. But just brush over the car. If you have a different color car, this might be a different a different process, but this is the recipe that I kind of use on on my silver car. It seems to work really, really well. So here's a trick. If you command click your layer mask, you can go th through and see what you missed. As you can see, my layer mask is terrible, but it took care of what we needed it to do. And you can see before and after. So we brought out a little contrast in the car, and then we also um, changed that color cast. So now I'm gonna make a stamped visible layer, and then we're gonna go into um, Nick Silver Effects Pro. So then they have this preset that I really like. It's a uh, high, high contrast, harsh. And again, we're gonna select that and let that run. And so this is going to bring some of the details out of the car. It has a structure slider in there, similar to Clarity in Lightroom, but I think it does a better job. So as you can see, you get a really dramatic black and white out of that. Now what I do is I go in and I change this to luminosity because I don't want to affect the color, but I do want to affect the contrast in the image. So then I'll go down and I'll lower that a bit just so it's not too harsh and then I'll make another stamped visible layer. Sometimes if the if it affects the background too much, um, you can lower the opacity even further, or if you want it just on the car, you can do the same stuff as we did before. So as you can see with um, my camera sensor, I have a dirty sensor. I have the Nikon D600, and um, if you guys are familiar with that, it has kind of a sensor issue with dust and oil spots, and I definitely have that in my camera. So because we were shooting at such a, a high aperture, I think this was around f16 or 18 or something like that, it definitely shows those um, dust spots. So we're going to go around and clone those. Um, I'm just using the healing brush now. And this does a pretty good job, especially on here. Um, with the direction of the road, a good tip is just to make sure you uh, go the direction, the clone in the direction of the uh, blur marks. And up in the sky, we're just going to do the same thing. I'm not going to bore you guys with doing all of this, so I'll skip ahead a little bit because um, there are quite a bit of spots. I actually cleaned my camera right after this image because. It's not bad. Okay, so now that we got a lot of those um, fixed, let's go into what it's going to take to get rid of this rig. So this is a step that a lot of you guys won't have to do unless you're shooting rig shots, obviously. Um, but I think it's it is probably still be interesting to see. So the idea is just to kind of find body lines that you can mimic and get rid of it and just clone it over. So what I did is stamped a new layer and then we're going to go through with the clone stamp tool and just kind of find clean areas of the windshield and the body line here and just clone over that. Um, the good thing with the clouds in the sky is kind of the random patterns work to hide it. Um, so you just, you got to kind of work at it. I mean, there's no, there's no magic bullet here. It's just going through, working at it, getting rid of it, working it from both sides. That's one of the difficulties with this particular um, style of automotive photography is just cloning out this and um, I'm still relatively new to this. I, I mean, this is like my second rig shot, so um, I'm still learning on how best to place the rig and the camera and to minimize shadows and highlights and reflections and things like that. So um, I'm learning along with you guys. Now, again, this is just... Um, I'm doing this image for the for this video here, but 
you'd want to take a little bit more time than I'm doing here to get rid of everything. Um, but this is just to kind of show you the main steps on, on what it'll look like. Um, I've also found that um, messing with the opacity of the clone stamp tool can help. Um, so if you lower the opacity, especially on these body lines with these reflections, um, it helps kind of hide that reflection and work back in. So it's similar to the opacity on the brush tool where it just samples a little bit of it and kind of feather it out and we got another dust spot there. So we're just going to go through and keep, uh, cloning through. So I'm going to fast forward just a little bit. Um, this gets a little bit tedious, but I think you guys get the idea. So now we have to address this big boom in the top. So what we're going to do is we're going to use content aware fill to see what it does. So we're just going to draw a loose selection with the lasso tool around the around the boom arm and then go up to fill edit fill and then content aware fill this usually does a pretty good job especially on the sky so you might have to go back and clean it up a little bit but it gets rid of probably 90 percent of it clean up a little bit of the artifacting around the edges but you know um something else that we're going to address here is the splash light from the mirror came on because I hit the I hit the door when I was pushing the car behind so we're going to clone that out really fast again just use your clone stamp tool and go the direction of the blur so I mean that gets rid of it pretty quick um one thing that we need to do is the street is almost the same color as the car and we don't want that we want some more contrast in there so we're going to use the curves layer we're going to pull down the blacks and push up the whites and what that's going to do is it's going to increase contrast in there and then we're going to make a layer mask black layer mask and then we're going to paint white over that so get your brush tool and just start painting and as you can see it um, that allows us to darken up street and kind of separates the the car out a little bit so now what we're going to do is if you notice there was a blue hue to that when we pulled that down so we're going to put a human saturation adjustment on that um, and then take the saturation down so we get the we get the concrete a little bit more gray and then we're just going to copy that layer mask up to that human saturation adjustment. So as you can see the asphalt's a little more asphalt color now instead of that blue. So we're going to make another stamp visible layer and then what I like to do is I just dodge right on the layer. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm going to burn in the shadows. So I'm going to make the shadows darker. So I'm going to go around the body lines anywhere where there's dark or where there's shadows. So in the headlights and that body line and the bot base body line, what this is going to do is this is going to make the darks a little bit darker. It's just going to help chisel out, chisel out the lines. Same thing here above the, above the turn signal, um, down on the front grill, around the headlight, on the hood body lines. It just helps it helps the illusion of making the car look more 3D in the photograph. Um, and then once you finish that, you're going to go to your dodge tool, and this is going to make everything a little bit brighter. So on the opposite sides of where you just burn, we're going to go through and we're going to dodge that, and it's going to make the lights darker, or the lights lighter. So just working around those same areas. Um, I'm going to add another another curves layer and again mask this out. This is going to be for the wheels. So we're, we want to bring some light back into the wheels. So just take a brush on the black mask and paint white. Make another stamp visible layer.
And now I'm going to go into camera on. This is something that CC 2015 lets you do. Let you put camera raw as an adjustment on a layer. So it just lets you fine tweak your image a little bit better. I like the interface of this. So you can go through, change your exposure. Um, another thing that I do in here is I like the way it sharpens. I think it sharpens just fine. So pull up sharpening a little bit. And then if you um, command click and drag, it'll show you where your mouse is. The other thing that this does is. Um, I do a little noise reduction in there. The process that I use with the Nick um, Silver Prex Pro introduces some grain into the image, so this helps get rid of that. So as you can see, not a huge difference, but it did make a difference. So then what I do, what I like to do towards the end of my edit is I go back into Nick Color Effects Pro. And I like to put a vignette. I like their vignette. Um, has a darken edges or light and center darken edges. So you just click on the center of the image where you want that focal point. And then you can adjust this. Um, it just helps bring bring more focus to the I guess the hero of the image. So as you can see, it just helps bring your eyes in. Um, to the center of a car, the car a little bit better. So the street's still looking a little bit too too bright for what I'm what I'm going for here. So we're gonna do another curves adjustment layer. Uh, we're gonna pull the blacks down, pull the whites up a little bit, and we're gonna go through and um, paint white on a black layer mask just to reveal the street again. and this just helps darken it up. The other thing with these particular rig shots that it does is it helps kind of accentuate that motion because it's really showing the streaks through the road. So since the headlights are on, um, well the gills are on, um, what do you say we make a little headlight? So we're going to make a new layer. And we're going to grab um, kind of a yellowish color and we're just going to draw out a circle gradient. So you do this in kind of two steps. So you got that kind of outer haze, and then you have a really bright intersection just to simulate, simulate that um, the projector beam. You can play with the opacity a little bit. So as you can see, you kind of got that outer haze, and then you got the, the bright inside. So I do those on two separate layers, that way I can adjust independently the opacity just to get it to kind of look great. And then just merge those two down so you can see before and after. So I think we're about done here, so I'm going to make another stamp visible layer and just toggle it on and off and you can see the, the transformation. I mean it didn't take that long to do, um, but I mean the results are pretty dramatic. So this is the process that I use for probably 90% of the photos that I post. Um, it works really good with silver cars. So you just have to experiment kind of with the recipe a little bit for different color cars. Um, another thing, I make a lot of stamp visible layers. That's, uh, that's kind of the way that I work. Everything's still there. Um, I can go back and change those, but you kind of just have to commit. Um, I know a lot of people make these on individual adjustment layers and things like that, but I just commit to the process. If this was kind of paid work, I'd, I'd have a different workflow, but I mean, this is just for me, for fun. Um, I know the creative direction that I want to go, so that's kind of how I work. So I, I'm sure there's going to be some comments about um, like a non-destructive workflow or whatever, but I mean, this is how this is how I do it. So that's, uh, that's pretty much a wrap up for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you if you want to see more of this kind of stuff, uh, give me a like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. Um, otherwise, if you want to see more of my work, check out my Instagram at um, Nathan Bremer. Anyways, see you guys.